So Asher, I want to welcome you to our community, welcome you to FACE. I'm going to promote you to being a panelist and then I'm going to unmute you. What okay. And should be able to hear you. Uh, the drop down menu asks you what kind of mic you're going to use. So looking forward to hearing your voice and want to thank you for being brave and just accepting the invitation to be with someone you never even knew before. And also to share your screen, you'll see a green box. You just hover your mouse over the drop down menu and click it and you would take the share away from Steve and show your screen. So, so far not hearing you and not seeing you. Yeah, let's take it one thing at a time. Uh, yeah, first well, of all, what's that to, red dot? To be able to hear him. Yes. Uh, which means that, you know, um, yeah. you should, you should, uh, you should choose. Well, he's a that YouTuber. Might... He's a YouTuber, so I'm sure he's there. Okay, here's his screen. Okay, we can see your screen, uh, but we can't still hear you. So um, if you go to the uh, panel, um, it should be at the top now that you're sharing your screen, probably. Um, the, left, uh, the left toggle is uh, the one, one to mute or unmute yourself. Exactly next to it, there is a little arrow showing up. If you click on that, it's going to give you audio options. So it's going to let you uh, choose the microphone you want to use. Probably you haven't chosen uh a microphone or the correct microphone because we we still can't hear you okay maybe now it's working yes yes now we can oh. hear you perfect uh i need okay. to change to the non-professional microphone uh, oh okay you know. all right yeah, I, we could hear you oh. fine now sure okay excellent all right so uh uh very nice to meet you yeah thank you for inviting me yeah well you know what i saw a tweet you did and then I watched your uh, YouTube video you had on that. And what attracted me to invite you as a guest was, I could tell that you really love the puzzle and the mystery of yeah. the financial markets. Uh, you know, it comes across in your demeanor. So when someone really loves what they do and the uh, mental exercise of predicting and trading markets, uh, I wanted to invite you to be with us. So thanks for taking the risk as a trader. It's not a big risk. Or you're not going to get stopped <laughs> out here, right? Yeah. So uh, I, here's my first question. Yeah. What came first, Asher? Your interest in the planets or your interest in the markets? It's a very interesting one because... Uh, if as a mature person the interest in the market but if i'm looking really back outside uh, back to my childhood i started first with astrology but oh, okay. as a very superficial you know very beginner yeah i always was fascinated to the mystery understanding people consciousness what's differentiating people between each other and until the ability to see a person and to feel more characters of him uh, as, a, um, as a combination of different frequencies that today I explain in by astrology. So I uh, okay. for the last uh, almost 15 years uh, in stock market. Mostly it was at the beginning, at least until the last three years, it was mostly failures. I followed all the technical analysis uh, procedures and learned with very good teachers, learned a lot of different patterns and using platform. And when it came to my money, always something occurred and I was very like a uh, very risk taker. And, you know, finally I, in 2015, in the summer of 2015, remember how bearish it was the summer, August. Yes. And this was my last, uh, how to say kick that uh, I needed to rebirth with my investing point of view ahead and then I started to look for other alternatives I realized that 
maybe it's not that someone is pushing the button or managing the trade against me uh, individually. I always had a feeling like how is when why I see people that are succeeding and when it comes to me I I don't know it's it's always felt to me like someone is watching my options open or my trade and doing something against. suddenly I realized that it's not possible this is a collective consciousness here and right amount uh, uh, you know how about so, this uh, uh, a guest once told me that the market's job is to convince you it's something that it's not uh-huh yeah what do you think? So, uh, you, know, uh, you know, you went through what a lot of people went through after 2000 and 2008. Uh, they decided, you know what? If anyone's going to lose my money, it's going to be me based upon my uh, work, not based upon anyone else's work, based upon what I see, uh, when I see it. And uh, you can't be lazy to be self-directed. Uh, you know, people talk about they have the secret uh, isn't the secret whether you're uh, using astrology to trade the markets or you're an Elliotician? The secret is hard work and perseverance and living through adversity, isn't it, buddy? Yeah, I learned to combine the both words, earth and sky, because mm -hmm. I realized that I could listen to all Bloomberg, CNBC news all over, understanding what the professional that even using terms in economy that I never really understood, but it never really bringing to me the, the entire picture. When I started to investigate, I dedicated two years of my life and I'm still doing it, but now from another mode, uh, to investigate all history and cycles through the astrology. And it's a very long school curve to mm -hmm. what I studied so far. And in the beginning, I started to share it voluntarily, the process of the things that I'm seeing and what expecting. And every failure or misalignment with the things I read in astrology, combining with a technical analysis, um, brought me to another higher level of accuracy and finding and learning from this mistake uh, going forward. This is very so interesting. That's a process. Yeah. And so, okay. Yeah. So uh, you, two years, uh, um, two years of just looking at cycles, uh, uh, you know, when you yeah. think about it, um, some of the, you know, you could even go back to the Bible, Daniel, or uh, you could go to uh, the wise men. So, mm -hmm. you know, astrology is not uh, a new thing. Um, yeah. I'm sure Joseph probably knew a little. He's my hero as far as the best commodity trader in history who stored mm -hmm. up the wheat knowing that there was going to be a famine or there could be one. So uh, tell me about, uh, I know a lot of your work is proprietary and I respect it. But uh, tell me about some of the breakthroughs that you made uh, with cycles and maybe how they apply to some of the things that you're seeing now. I see you brought like a little bit of a PowerPoint for us. So yeah, no, I'm going to shut is, up for a while. Buddy. This is, this is, I, I just will show you just, I, I'm every Tuesday doing to my members uh, a, for, a weekly forecast to nail the projection of uh, the movement. This is what I'm doing Tuesday for oil and gold, and on Thursday I'm scanning the main uh, crypto. So actually I'm looking on both, the technical and the uh, astrology and creating sort of a calendar. The calendar is uh, representing the dynamic that I'm watching through uh, the, the inner planets. We consider the inner planets and outer planets like Uranus, Pluto, the, the bigger planets that are outer are relating more to the environmental and to the background or like the main trend or the long term. The inner planets are that I'm putting in the calendar are more inner planets that this is something that you can see now green, but maybe we are just in a long term downtrend. So this is what is it. And then I'm showing to 
a different perspective as daily, uh, for example, this was for gold. Uh, you can see a little bit beyond here, but this is what I'm expecting, for example, as projection for the coming days. Okay. And I combining my technical analysis today with definitely a revolutionizing uh, ability to measure and how to look and read the technical, because what I'm doing, I'm receiving, I will show you another example. I like how you call it astrology instead of astrology, using the first letter of your name, Asher Astrology. <laughs> yeah. Asher so you're astrology. a marketer too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so just a second, I want to show you, where is it? Yeah. Is, uh, just out of curiosity, is today a big day in the planets with uh, Jay Paul speaking in <laughs> about 45 today, minutes? Today we are starting Virgo. So I just spoke in another video that Virgo sign, the sun already in Virgo and Mars and Venus already entered the last days too. Virgo is related to purging, to making order, to put things in their, in their place and to do diet, to any, and detoxing. So I think that with the things that I'm, that I'm watching, the U.S. is going to do a lot of uh, necessary work now in order to clean the bothers and the disruption to the U.S. economy. I called to the Leo season, which was until the last days during August, the, the top of the trade war. And Leo, Lions, this is what actually we saw very big powers in, against each other very fire element, very, I say that. Oh, that's a video I saw. You were talking about. Vlad was parking around and I thought people try to avoid such a risk because people are going to get dirt without, without expecting. Now purging time, Virgo time, we're going to clean some hands. And I think that Bitcoin is also sort of a disrupt to the, to such, so you think the trade war tensions are peaking based upon what the planets are speaking to you? Because we had that news about China today, uh, <clears throat> the retaliatory actions that they're going to take. Yeah, uh, actually, China is going to be, uh, seem to be defeated in a way. And finally, toward the next month of September, even the middle of October, I think that it will be a little bit of a foric a feeling to the U.S. and sort of bringing back to control the, the environment and something suddenly is going to be shift. From this October 2019, oh my goodness to economy. Uh, Mercury will be retrograded and in Scorpio and on Venus itself. It's not going to encourage Saturn and Pluto are going to start moving direct before meeting in January 2020. The last months of this year, the, two, the last two months will remind something of the last uh, two months of uh, last year, that everything fell down. Uh, if we remember yes. gold and oil and stock market together. And I, I asked among others, where the money goes? when everything is that much falling. Now, you are seeing this hyperinflation happening with the USD, and it's fascinating to find the correlation between the oil price, what actually I just brought here quickly, you see the indices of oil, that is very much correlated when the oil price, uh, they are moving direct together with S&P specifically. The For a while. Oil. So together with the, the minting of USDT that is now used by other powers, probably China, um, to, to act as an effective trade war. Um, I don't know, this is so too complicated to understand the, 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 the results of it. But what I wanted to tell you at the, for the previous question, how I'm looking on cycles. This is, for example, as you see the sea boat uh, based on its natal chart and here it's OPEC and I'm looking on different aspects. It's like, this is the 
the not 100% of my reading, but pretty much higher percent than other things, uh, because it's based on my interpretation. And I know about the, exactly on what dates the planets will do certain aspects. So I need to look together on the technical chart, and then I start to combine the dates and the triggers of timing with my grid that I'm creating. So in, in gold example, this is just of the last uh, video I did. That's something that I could draw as a offer projection. And I was speaking already since time ago that gold is going to maintain the heights between the 1450 to 1500 until almost the end of August. And interestingly enough, they are very much correlated with the Bitcoin price that is again. Gold and Bitcoin are correlated? Only Bitcoin and gold right now seems to be an alternative asset. Okay. To, to the US strategy sort of, uh, but. To the dollar. Yeah, it's okay. so corruptive to the things that I've just discovered in yesterday crypto forecast that it seems that Bitcoin is not going to anywhere from here, at least in the coming year. And even it will do some percentage up and down. I don't see it going as many YouTubers are speaking to go to 20K and above. How about down to seven? This is... Now Bitcoin is ruled by the same wells that are running the stock market and billions of dollars are running there. I'm, I'm following one Twitter, one uh, in Twitter that is called um, Wells Alert. And you could see all the huge millions and billions. Just the last hour I saw uh, one transaction of 300 million, million dollars of Bitcoin from one wallet to another. So who are holding those su such amount? It's become disconnected from sort of the collective consciousness because a Bitcoin born to be a social money or to give- Yeah, it was supposed to be for the unbanked little guy. And yeah. now it sounds like it's being moved around by huge exactly, funds. Exactly, exactly. So okay. together with- They take the, over everything. Yeah, so together with what is expected to happen in the global economy, uh, and the condition that Bitcoin is right now uh, will, will. I, I have a question for you, you know, four hour charts and, you know, yeah. it, it's, it's great to be able to, you know, yeah. uh, you know, call like, you know, twenty thirty dollar move in gold. I'll show you this one. This is until, no, this is already. Oh, interesting. No, this is what I showed actually in June 25th. Mm -hmm. And. You could see here in June 21st, 23rd, mm -hmm. that I expected a higher price. And, right, okay. And later, and then I expected to, uh, and to continue. Yeah. So we haven't gotten that. We never achieved that uh, 1350 level, or you have option A, mm -hmm. option B. Okay, so do you feel that uh, macro, because, uh, you know, I've been looking at this, and uh, people hated gold at 1150, 1250. This is another thing that you want to... Everyone do. loves it now. So is it possible when you look at monthly charts that we've only rallied a little bit more than 50% back from the high in 2011 uh, to the low at 1050? I forgot what year that was, 2015 or so, um, that this could just be a bear market rally in the metals? Or is this the beginning of a huge multi-year bull market in the metals based on your work? Um, I, I just want to make sure I understood your question. You are asking if what I expect to come down in the end of this year will be an official no, bear market? just kind of a big picture look on gold. Uh, you know, I, uh, could it possibly be instead of the beginning of a new bull market and we're going to take out 1900 and, you know, some of the super bulls and gold that all we've had is a retracement of the move from 1900 to 1050. Listen. First you know of what all, I'm saying? Yeah. First of all, I'm tending to stand with six months ahead prediction because okay. if I think about prices, I really need to base some good uh, 
alignment yeah, I... with technical and I, the, the far I look I I miss the the, the zone you know like, like I, I understand that a hundred percent so I actually there are very significant aspects that are happening uh, through the planets already from January and we are entering totally to a new world and region of actions and uh, perspective and it could unfold in many different ways that very risky and difficult to duplicate or to consider things that happened in the last 10 years to what will come now indeed things are working in cycle but we are going to come out gradually from the capricorn zone so capricorn is the old is the old school way Okay. And once we will enter to Aquarius, this is the alien sort of environment. This is When's that totally happen? The beginning of next year? Um, the end of uh, next year. End of next year. Yeah, of 2020 and toward 21. This is already when Saturn will move to Aquarius. It will be a big shift. Now, in this January, we will have incredible concentration of planets in Capricorn. So, first of all, it's also, Capricorn is cold, is tough, is hard, is the sign of the winter. And we know how animals are behaving in the winter, the need yeah, to stay at home and to have enough supply of food, and et cetera. And it seems to me like speaking about recession or very hard to leave time. So it's a sort of to get prepared to a very, also in the weather, very cold, freezing winter. To what the ice to age, you know, there are a lot of people talking about that. Yeah, instead of sort of, warming. sort of. So huh. it will be really difficult even for supply or providing uh, food in supermarkets probably because of this. Or maybe, wow. maybe different structures will be in, or in reorganization or I don't know. Okay. We need to prepare. But after this, something is rebuilding inside it. It will be very interesting um, and restructuring start of process, like cracks in the ice during uh, 2020. And it's very difficult still to assume from this point because the most inter interesting things that I'm expecting is from March 2020. And I need a little bit, one, two months ahead in order to understand how it's going to unfold. And yeah, this is, for example, I'm showing a very general without showing the little moves, but we can see until October. Um, very interesting time, October, that gold seems to go to the minimum or probably to the level of the 1350, 1330 levels, as you could see here. Okay. And then something is happening. And you see it's sort of a little um, higher low in the beginning of November. And this area between the, the end of November to the beginning of at the end of October to the beginning of November seems to me very correlated with things that I'm doing to the S&P. I'm also creating good. So possible tops in the S&Ps and bottom. Yeah. And, uh, and then gold will continue going higher. And from here, uh, all option in December, uh, I see drastically the stock market falling and the gold uh, going higher. Now to where higher, Mer I would need to see. Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Yeah, but more to, yeah, it will be a sort of duplication to the last December. Okay. We had that is a sharp shift of uh, direction. So what's the uh, best way for people to follow you? Is it Twitter or do you want to give out your website? Uh, um, this would be the time for you to show for people that hear us live now or watch a video later how they can follow yeah. your work. I actually have become a subscriber or whatever. Yeah, okay. I have actually my Patreon channel that is patreon.com slash astrofinance. Okay. I'm sharing uh, different videos, very valuable one every Thursday to crypto, every Tuesday to commodities. 
and every Monday a general world astrology that I'm sharing two three days after in YouTube I have my YouTube channel just Google us Osher astrology and you could find me in different way places and yeah have you written any books any books yeah have you huh what about to, to about study what? Uh, yeah about uh, trading planetary trading or anything like that uh, I developed it myself and hopefully once it's all set I will write the books I came okay. here to bring something new to the world and not to replicate things that were before. okay well uh, you did bring something new to face and and that's your face so I uh, appreciate you coming here today and uh, like it or not Asher you know you're now my trading warrior brother that everyone's, uh, you know, knighted with that, that comes and speaks to us and uh, shares their work and edifies their community. So um, it was great meeting you and uh, wish you uh, much success and uh, may shekels rain down on you and everyone else that uh, follows your work. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very so, much. I appreciate it. All right, great meeting you. Shalom, Asher, and uh, uh, let's get back together maybe uh, late this fall or early in the winter yeah. and see what happens. Yeah, even before that, before the winter starting, I think it will be very interesting insight to look forward. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, you know, I'm in California. We'll see how cold it gets here this winter. Uh, but, uh, let's see how how strong the earthquakes could be there. Uh, there too, yeah. We're already that's uh, we're rock and rolling right now, uh, having a few. So yeah, everything's yeah. going to happen, isn't it? Uh, you kind of see that we're really entering a time of turbulence, don't you? Exactly. All right. So, uh, you know, it, it, there's, you have risk taking no risk right now. So why not take risk? What do you think? Mm, I suggest in, in general view to be flexible as possible right now, like not to commit to something that could lock the door on you. Yeah. So whatever strategy a person is taking now, whether it's to move to another apartment, starting a new contract, try to do it temporal because the changes are imminent and strong enough. And this is a time that many people are going to or ask to follow their higher calls, things that were tight that we always wanted or felt called to do, but some fears controlled us. Now it's a real time to uh, to follow them because this is what more we're here for we all have a mission yeah he's but, got a plan this is part of it and he's going to finish what he started yeah and actually like the animals what are doing you know they have a sort of a natural gps that yeah. understanding the direction yeah. and uh and this is a very awakening time i guess uranus is retrograding now and and lies and secrets are going to come up from different medias and stories of our life, also from our personal life. Yeah. And we need just to go with our real true because people so far are, or still are sort of zombie and very much programmed. And speak about the Jupiter-Neptune square, which is the last time in September 15th, next month, and this is the highlight. It was all this year that people trying to be in euphoric mode. Everything is fine. And this is a moment of awakening, at least to awake to your own desires and what you, a person deserves more than just trying to keep on the trend that the media is showing him to believe or follow. Can we this simplify this? Follow your heart. Yeah. You know, people okay. are zombie to Bitcoin specifically. Yeah, zombie to money. But in Aquarius time, we will, before it, we will realize that there are so much better things that even we're not appreciating. And this is also a place to think about what is going to be the next value we are. We're going to move from such a conventional trends probably that all, everybody are trading. Uh, it's okay. going to be I don't know about you, but I believe this. Money comes and goes. 
time is gone forever, make it count. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. being a cancer survivor. Okay, so uh, anyway, really a pleasure meeting you, Asher. Let's keep in touch, and the video will be out on uh, Twitter two, three hours from now. Excellent. So, uh, best Thank of luck to you. For you too. All right, Bye. great meeting you. Thank you, everyone, for a great week. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings, and we'll see everyone Monday. Adios. Thank you again, Asher. Bye-bye.